Okay. Next up, we've got Tom. Thank you very much, Tom. Hi. Uh, who uses Twitter a lot? Yeah, you, you have my condolences. Uh, sometimes it seems like Twitter was designed from the ground up to be the perfect tool for harassment. Twitter has a dogpiling problem. Uh, people use their followers, people can use their followers as sort of a private army to attack and harass others. And it happens to me like a little bit online, but not much just because of like who I am and frankly like what I look like. But if you're a woman or a member of a marginalized group, Twitter can just be a nightmare. And the thing that you always need to remember is they're never going to fix it because Twitter's money comes from engagement and abuse is super engaging. So a while back I wrote a tool called Secator that I hoped would help stop dog piles in their tracks when they happen. It allows a Twitter user with a single click to block or mute an account and all of its followers uh, for a period of time. So it's a temporary block of about six weeks or 12 weeks or you know, long enough to just make things cool down. And so that's the project that I've been working on for a little while and I'd really love you to come and talk to me about it. Um, but today what I'm gonna talk to you about is the sort of threat modeling that I needed to do while I was building this because it's a tool for vulnerable people to protect themselves against hateful people, so I need to make sure that no matter what, I don't make things worse, right? So it's a web app, and what does it have that an attacker might want? And there's a couple things, but the big one is the Twitter, is the Twitter user's OAuth credentials. Uh, who's used the Twitter API before to write any kind of app? Cool, okay. Twitter does not have fine-grained control over application privileges. There are three levels, read-only, almost everything, and everything. And because I'm blocking users with, uh, with this app, the permissions that Secateur requires would allow it to tweet as you, read your tweets, update your profile, and it lets you send direct messages to anyone. So you might notice that this screenshot weirdly doesn't mention that part. So if, if, if that level of privileges kind of freaks you out a little bit, then now is the perfect time to go to your Twitter settings page and see what apps you've already given these privileges to. Because like, if you've ever like, posted a picture with Instagram, Instagram can send DMs for you if you want, if you don't want. So in my web app, there's like four bits of information that an attacker would need to get in order to capitalize on this ability. Uh, there's a system-wide consumer key and consumer secret. And for each individual user, uh, an OAuth token and an OAuth secret. So the consumer keys are delivered to the application by environment variables, sort of 12-factor app style, if you've done this sort of thing before. So in order to steal those, you'd have to compromise the system outright or um, get code execution if you, can somehow, if you can somehow execute Python code in the context of the application. You can just ask for those settings. And that's kind of a worst case scenario, and hopefully it's non-trivial to do if I've done my job right. On the other hand, if you just ignore the app entirely and compromise my Twitter account, Twitter will just hand them to you on a silver plate. So it's not necessarily the code or the system that's the first priority for me to worry about securing. It's compartmentalization. I needed to decouple the app from my own personal Twitter developer API account because that's just like on my phone, you know, it's my, it's my casual one. The other thing that an attacker would need to access are the user-specific OAuth credentials. And in this case, you kind of have the same problem that you often have with, with web apps, which is they live in the database and they're not hashed or encrypted because they need to be presented to the Twitter API and in their original form. So, Compromising the system or achieving code exec, like I said before, would, would get you those as well. But you also have the additional problem of um, SQL injection would be a way to these variables since the secret is in the database. So I always have to make sure that like, the code and config is robustly protected from those as well. But in this case, maybe I can actually do something better because ideally you wouldn't keep anything damaging in your database at all if you could avoid it. Do I actually need to keep these keys? Uh, can I throw them away immediately? And the answer is, I do need them, but only temporarily. Because the tool that I wrote blocks people for a period of time. It blocks people for a couple weeks. It has to be able to unblock them again when that time period expires. So it needs to hold those keys as long as there are unblock operations scheduled for that user. 
once those have expired, I can delete those credentials automatically. So that means that over time, no sensitive credentials remain in the system. The, um, none, nothing will remain there indefinitely. So if you say logged into the tool once and looked at it and went, oh, actually, I don't really need it, and then just kind of forgot about it, within a short period of time, if you haven't blocked anyone with it, it'll just delete the credentials right away, and it'll just delete the credentials anyway. So it won't come back to haunt you if it ever does get compromised. So finally, if someone actually needs a tool like this, it's probably because they've already been victimized. So it would be pretty unethical for me to tell anyone that they simply have to trust me in order to use it, right? How do I protect users from myself? And the answer is basically you have to make sure they can do it entirely themselves if they need to. Uh, they can get, if they, if they have a little bit of know-how and the threat, their, the threat facing them is, is high enough, they can get their own Twitter API credentials and they can spin up their own Secator on localhost, which hopefully will be less reachable um, from the internet. Uh, and that wasn't, so, so it kind of had to be open source. It had to be available to everyone to use, not just as a web app, but for people to grab for themselves if they needed to. And that wasn't really a given. I didn't really think that I would do that. But I realized that if I'm trying to be on the side of people who need this help, I'm absolutely obliged to make sure that they're not forced to trust me in order to use it. So that's all the time that I've got for this. But um, I've been working on this for a while. So please, come and talk to me about it. Uh, grill me about my design choices. Well, no, the design is, the, the, I'm, not great, I'm not a very good designer. Um, grill me about the architecture of it. Try and, try and tell me what I've done wrong. Um, ask me questions. Help me help people. Uh, thank you very much for listening.